When looking at the battles fought between the UNSC and the Covenant, we, for the most part, only see giant starships that are hundreds of meters long slugging it out. And while we do see smaller fighters and strike craft in most cutscenes, they mostly are only seen in the background to add extra flavor to the awesome battle scene. But this didn't mean their strike craft weren't important, as they served many uses on both sides. The UNSC mainly used their strike craft to destroy Covenant fighters and dropships, or to engage Covenant capital ships that had their shields taken down, whilst the Covenant could use their strike craft to directly engage human warships as well as other UNSC fighters, due to the UNSC ships not having energy shielding until very late into the war. Today, we cover the strike craft used by the UNSC. Starting off with easily the most recognizable UNSC fighter in the Halo series, that being the GATL-1 Longsword, or more commonly known as the Longsword. This was a ship we see escort in the Pillar of Autumn during the first cutscene of Halo Combat Evolved, and even though it was a very old fighter, having been used all the way back during the Insurrectionist Wars, many years before the events of the Human Covenant War, was still very effective. It had a length of 64.1 meters, that being 210 feet, a width of 75 meters, that being 246 feet, and a height of 4.9 meters, that being 42.9 3 feet. This made it extremely large for a fighter, but with all that space gave it room for lots of weapon hardpoints. It was equipped with two 50mm length auto cannons, although there was a variant that used 110mm auto cannons, four ASGN missile tubes, a 120mm ventral gun, and even some space for a Shiva class nuclear missile and 36 space mines. There was a variant called the CS-12 longsword that mainly focuses armament on shield busting 50mm coil guns and had a pair of twin reactor engines, giving it the ability to catch up with smaller Covenant fighters despite its huge size. Its armor was standard for UNSC warships, that being a thick layer of titanium A battle plating, but this can only shrug off small arms fire from Covenant weaponry, as any weapons found on Covenant capital ships would take it down in a single shot for the most part. It had a crew of four, that being the pilot, navigator, co-pilot, and systems operator. It had the option of carrying the artificial intelligence with it, which would increase the efficiency of the fighter significantly. Some additional features was this option to have a cryo bay for long missions. Some notable battles that the Longstar was in was the Battle of Reach and the Battle of Installation 04, where a few of these escorted the Pillar of Bottom during the events of Halo Combat Evolved. The Longsword is basically like the X-Wing from Star Wars. It was the jack of all trades. Good at everything, but not great in anything. The YSS-1000 Saber, or just known as a Saber, is the only vessel in this list that wasn't used by the UNSC Navy, but instead was only used by the UNSC Air Force, which meant it mainly fought in a planet's atmosphere, or in low orbit. It can go into space with the assistance of specialized booster engines. The Saber was also a very unique ship, being fitted with primitive energy shields during the events of the Human Covenant War. And although they were nothing compared to the Covenant Shield technology, they can still take a few shots from fighters such as the Space Banshee or the Seraph. Saber was primarily an interceptor, and thus was much smaller than a longsword, and had much lighter weaponry. Having only a pair of twin-linked 30mm cannons and four Medusa-class missile tubes, and as we see during the events of the Fall of Reach, it did its job as an interceptor quite well. As we see here, tearing through dozens of Covenant fighters such as the Space Banshee and Seraphs with little issue. It had a crew of two, that being the pilot and a radio intercept officer. Its most important battle was, of course, the Fall of Reach where dozens of Seraphs followed the UNSC fleet to defend the last human stronghold, besides Earth of course. It was also involved in Operation Uppercut, where a noble team boarded a Covenant Corvette, placed a slow space bomb on it whilst it was docking with the Covenant supercarrier, the Long Night of Solus, and destroying both ships once it was detonated. And other than fighting a petty pirate group and fighting during the Battle of Reach, the Saber didn't see much combat, as most if not all of them were destroyed during the Battle of Reach. The F-41 Broadsword Interceptor was a well-armed space superiority fighter, and functioned as an upgrade to the fighter previously mentioned, the Saber. It had a length of 66.3 feet, that being 20.2 meters, a width of 64.5 feet, that being 19.7 meters, and a height of 35.7 feet, or 10.9 meters. Its armament was very similar to that of the Sabers, having a pair of twin-link 35mm cannons and two M6088 missile delivery systems. Its crew was small, having only one pilot. Its purpose was very similar to that of the Serebs, and that being destroying other fighters and dropships, and due to its powerful engines, it can keep up with the fastest Covenant fighter, the Seraph. There was a variant called the F-41E Broadsword, its only difference was it had an energy shield and better sensor technology. This limited the power that can go to the engines though, making it slightly slower than the earlier, unshielded variant. The most important battle of the broadsword participated in 
was the unnamed battle to destroy them in its approach, the flagship of the die deck. After failing to save Ivanov's station from being composed, the Master Chief used one of the station's broadswords to pursue the massive forerunner ship. After destroying its many point defense guns, the UNSC flagship, the UNSC Infinity, used her massive Mac guns to punch a hole in the mantle's approach, allowing the Master Chief to fly his broadsword in, but was destroyed when the fighter was crushed, forcing John to take the Havoc nuke to the composer beam on foot. The UNSC was completely outmatched in space warfare up until after the war was over, but their strike craft were able to at least compete with the Covenant counterparts. I'd like to thank you for watching this, and I will kindly consider you subscribing to stay up to date with all the lore and gaming videos that come out on this channel. I'll see you guys day after tomorrow. Goodbye, my friends.